welcome to this The Secret World Let's Play. You're Sambo and joining us for the first time here is our character. Her name is Seraphis Thrawn. If we have a look at her character sheet here you can see Seraphis Sambo NZ Thrawn and right now we've got one title called Novice. That is us. Say hello to her. You're going to be seeing a lot of her coming up in the series with her red pigtailed hair and her glasses. Now just a few things before we get going by the way folks and I know that a lot of you guys have been really keen for us to start getting on with this particular title and you know what no one is more keen than I I've been absolutely loving this game yes it's a little bit rough around the edges but believe you me folks before too long you certainly start looking past that and start figuring out what an amazing game this really is so what is the secret world what's it about what's our let's play series going to be about this time is it going to be the same as our others these are the questions that I'm sure a lot of you have we're just going to spend a couple of minutes very quickly talking about that. Firstly, the Secret World, yes, is an MMO. It is a freeform MMO. There are no levels, there are no classes. It's very, very different, and that's one of the things I love about it. The other thing I love about it is the fact that it is very heavily story driven. The story in here is creepy, it is interesting, it's full of puzzles, it's full of real world puzzles. And in fact, if I hit B, look at this, we've got ourselves a built in web browser in the game, and trust me, we're going to need that in order to find a bunch of stuff and a bunch of clues in the game itself. In fact, it's regularly hopping out into the real world. That is what is so amazing about this game. And in fact, the locations are real world as well. Right now, we're in London and you can also be in New York and, well, you know what, I'm not going to give it away. There are a few real world locations and the line between the real world and here kind of gets blurred from time to time. Again, if you're used to your traditional MMO fair where it's like a theme park where you're getting guided through doing you know fetch quests and all the rest of it yes there's a few fetch quests in here but in terms of your character progression and the type of quests that you're asked to do it is nothing like you've ever played before believe me it is just incredible and if you're like me and you get wrapped up in it you're going to find it very very difficult to log out just like me I've got two characters this is our let's play character I do have another one but for this particular character we're going to be playing it through completely fresh now unlike my other let's play series we're not actually going to go through every little window in the first episode we're not going to go through every little detail I'm not going to explain everything all up front and this is a big departure from my normal style this is kind of like a bit of a self-indulgent let's play and there's a few things about it that you guys need to know firstly it is mature content so if you're watching this and you're underage or if you are a parent and you're wondering whether or not you want your kids to watch this generally speaking you don't want them to there is sex there there is nudity and there is pretty full-on language as well it is most definitely an adult game now you might have noticed that we've made this a show it is a YouTube show and where possible I'm gonna make sure that there's an age gate on it and that means that it's gonna warn you up front if there is any content in here which could be either mature or offensive so make sure you check that at the beginning if you are logged in in an account that shows you that you're not 18 or whatever it decides to rate a particular show then you literally won't be able to watch it so there you go once more parents this is mature content oh and there we go we've got someone else coming into the world this is the starting area so obviously we're going to see new characters coming here all of the time second part of it is that this show unlike the others isn't going to follow any particular format or schedule and I'm going to repeat myself there there is no schedule so for everyone that asks hey when's the next episode when's the next episode when are you going to upload the next one the answer quite literally is I don't know it depends on so many factors you know what some weeks we may get three episodes some weeks we may get none some of the episodes might be five minutes long just one little thing other episodes might be an hour long it's chaotic in nature because the game is chaotic in nature and again this is a very self-indulgent let's play if you like so unlike all of my other series where we take a lot of time going through all the different systems there we go in fact there's something that's come up right away waypoint markers show the direction and distance to your current objective we're not going to go through all that stuff we're just going to learn it on the fly so we're going to play through this character completely fresh all of the experiences that happen to me while we're playing it's going to be basically alive so we're not going to do things ahead of time and explain it all we'll just deal with them as they come up and I think for once that's going to make a massive change for my normal style and it's going to be something just a little bit different now we'll go through the very very basics of it the very basic windows but aside from that we're just going to learn as we go along and that means you guys get to literally play the game with me and who knows where
where it's going to go. So let's quickly do that. Let's hop into the menu here and you can see we've got a bunch of stuff. C is the character sheet and there it is. It's a very different looking character sheet. Again, don't worry about what you're looking at. We'll explain it when it becomes necessary. We've got character statistics. There we go. We've got our faction rank. You can see it's very easy to get around. We've got ourselves a little gear management window here, which is awesome by the way. It's like a template and we've got ourselves a dressing room which allows us to select what gear we're wearing. And you can see here the interface is very cool. If I zoom out on her, the interface zooms in and out as well. It's kind of dynamic. Really, really cool. Alright, so that's the character window. What else have we got in here? We've got something called the Ability Wheel, and we've also got Character Skills. We don't have access to either of those yet. I for Inventory. There is our inventory. It's nice and simple. We've got ourselves a Mission Journal as well, and we'll get into that in just one second. That's literally our quest log. We've also got ourselves a PvP window, and we'll be dealing with that a lot later on in the game, or rather a lot later on in our episode. We've got Achievements, and we've got Lore. Yes, there are tons and tons of achievements in this game, and by the way, any of these particular windows that pop up if you're playing along from home you can click on this question mark here and it will bring up some really really detailed fantastic help by the way complete with pictures and explanations and a whole bunch of stuff it's really cool all right so let's get rid of that next up we've also got an assembly window that is kind of like crafting we'll touch that later on in the series we've got a friends list there we go that's pretty easy to understand hello laughter she's offline at the moment we've got ourselves a cabal that there is the equivalent of a guild we don't belong to a guild yet we've also got ourselves as you knew before a web browser that's B and then we've got help and we've got settings and settings are very similar to Age of Conan if you've ever seen them before around the actual screen itself up the top we've got a compass so I don't know if you can see that on the YouTube video but I'm facing due east at the moment and then of course north west etc etc obviously if I hold down my left mouse button it spins the camera right mouse button actually spins me around I can hold both mouse buttons buttons to move if I so wish. You've also got a sprint in this and by the way you'll see it here if I hold down X there we go sprinting so that means I can automatically run a whole bunch faster and I can toggle, you can see a little icon appeared there, I can toggle that off so I just jog around as well. Over here we've got ourselves a mini map by the way, that's me, and you can see up the top here if I hover over things in the mini map, it actually shows me what they are, and I can zoom in and out on that. I've got a waypoint here, mission goal, go to the tube station, so it's actually pointing along the road, you probably can't see that on the YouTube video. I've got a mail icon, I've got a wireless signal, I've got a clock and of course in the main screen you can see I've actually got that big pointer there which is showing me the way to my next objective here if I hover over this it says London calling go to the tube station and I can hover over this and click on these and it actually brings up the journal so that is how you know it's like a quest tracker if you like and that's how you know where you're up to down the bottom here you've got some hints and tips as well so whenever something new appears on the screen it drops down there and you can click on it and it says here you go waypoint markers point towards your next mission objective the number indicates the distance following the marker takes you directly to your objective be careful however you never know what could be lurking along the way so there we are let's have a look at this by the way London calling it says you've been recruited by the Templars now if you haven't gone and watched episode zero of my series I highly suggest you do that because then that will make sense an old and powerful secret organization the recruiter said that they can help you come to terms with your newfound wild and unwieldy powers you were asked to go to London and find them so that's exactly where we are we are now in London tier one of this particular mission is that the police have blocked off the streets leading towards the Templars HQ DI Shelley let you through the barricades she talked about an incident in Tokyo and asked you to find the profits in the street so you can see here we have to go to the tube station so that's what we're going to do in just a second but I just want to recap on what we've covered off so far because we're not going to do anything like that for the rest of the series pretty much on oh, by the way in case you're wondering down the bottom here are our skills our hot bar if you like that there actually will populate with the skills that we have and we'll get into that much later on and if I hover over this bar down the bottom here it actually shows me my XP by the way so let's recap once more firstly this is a mature game so again it is not for kids please pay attention to the age gating at the beginning of the video there is sex there is nudity and there is very coarse language and there are some pretty horrific scenes and horror violence later on in the game as well. Definitely not for the young'uns. Secondly, this show is going to be as chaotic and as unscheduled 
difficult and unpredictable as the game is itself. And of course, that's why I absolutely love this game, by the way. Oh, and if you're wondering what that is that popped up, I just clicked on myself. I've enabled that in the options. I can self-target, if you like, by clicking on me. And that shows that I've got 1,500 hit points, by the way. If I click anywhere on the screen, it deselects me. So yes, there is going to be no schedule. When is the next episode? I don't know. I'm going to repeat that one. When's the next episode? I honestly don't know. It depends how busy I am. It depends what I feel like doing. And again, this show could be uploaded maybe four times a week. And there could be four 10-minute episodes, just little snippets, giving us more clues, following the story a little bit more. Or there could be one massive two-hour episode. Or there could be nothing. So again, like the game itself, who knows what's going to happen and when. And in terms of explaining everything, no. We're just going to play this totally blind. So please, I don't want you guys to go, oh, Sambo, you made a mistake. Oh, why don't you know this? Oh, you're such a noob. We are playing it fresh. So I'm going to learn along with you guys. And for this sort of game, you know what? I think that's the best thing. Again, remembering it is a completely unstructured game in terms of your character. There are no levels and there are no classes. The builds are completely open. It is totally customizable. And that's what's amazing about this game. So there you go, folks. That is it. That is the rules. That is the premise. We're going to actually learn things as we go, as different interface elements unlock. We're going to learn about them as well. Do I understand exactly how the character system works here with its various talismans? What's a talisman? No, we don't know. And right now, we don't care. The game will tell us. What about which particular stats are best? Again, we don't care. The game will tell us. We will figure it out as we go along. Am I wearing the right clothes? I have no idea. And you know what? I like it that way. So there you go, folks. I think without further ado, all we're going to do is run on down here to our objective and see where the game takes us. Okay. Now, I have been playing, like I say, on another character, which is with another faction, and I've been thoroughly enjoying myself. And you know what? The story there is just amazing. Now, by the way, we've never run through these streets on the game before, so you're going to get a little bit of lag. That's what you saw there, as we have all of these new textures to the game load in, but it will calm down later on. Trust me. But do you know one of the things I really love about this game is it is basically real-world settings. Everything here is, as you would see it in the real world, and especially in this part of London. They've modeled it pretty much exactly. In fact, if you're from London, you'll probably recognize this particular area here. It's very cool. It's one of the things I love about it. Again, that blend between the real world and the game world gets kind of blurred, if you know what I mean. Now, again, a lot of people are saying, oh, gosh, the graphics are awful and the animations are awful and the combat animations are awful. Look, I'm the first to admit that in this game, it is not what you'd expect, as in it's a little rough around the edges. But do you know what? I love it. It adds character to the game. And very quickly, like I said, you will see past those. The game very quickly actually soaks you up in its lore and drags you along in the storyline and you forget about it and you kind of get used to how it looks and you know what I actually really really like the way it looks now that's just me and I'm sure that you guys playing it at home will love it as well I'm sure you know what I'm talking about so again you're free to explore absolutely anywhere you like Sorry about the texture loading in there and a bit of lag and you can see the motion blur is in full effect there I've deliberately got that turned on because I like it here we go. Goal completed. Find the profit square outside the station. So you see it updates. And then over here, we've literally got another thing called Listen to the Fallen King. And it updates this as well. If we click on that, all we need to do is find the Fallen King. And I dare say that that is him up there. Let's have a listen to him. Too late to start recycling. <laughs> to go to raves to save the gorillas. To cash out those Anansi sheds. There's a storm coming. Mondo storm. Paint your glass houses shut! You don't have to take his word for it. This is a warning from the sun. It says it's old and tired and scared of death. It says you've lived as young gods for too long. Spoiled children who only need to wish for something and it'll come true. Well, those days are gone now and won't be here again. <laughs> Sorry! I'll show you how it all goes down through the medium of unreliable narration. A vision of the future. This could be your lucky day. Tomorrow and all the ones after, not so much. It's a hot, wet day. You ever notice how the apocalypse always comes on a wet day? There's the smell of warm air and stale piss. The atmosphere is electric. I mean, Actually electric, sparking off the tracks. 
lifting and snapping your hair. A voice over the speakers that you don't hear. You itch. The black signal sounds. Lights out. It's all shut down. Kaiden Cho, everything. From the park to, to Arachi Tower. SDF quarantine. Good news for Tokyo, bad news for us. I thought the dragon thrived on chaos. Someone once told me the Illuminati had all the answers. They're saying a bomb. It's never just a bomb. Something worse. Something that brought the filth with it. So we fight. That's what us Templars do. I enjoy a good fight. It's just these trousers are bloody velvet. Sarah! Thank Gaia! And there we are. You can see we've had a goal completed. Listen to the Fallen King. By the way, it's coming up there and saying if you wish to skip this segment, head upstairs and use the exit. But that is typical of this game. I don't know if you were paying attention in that cutscene, but it was a little bit weird. Yeah. If you don't know what I'm talking about, maybe rewind and just pay attention to my character. All right. We well, can see we've got a tutorial question mark pop up down the bottom here. Let's see what it has to say. And it's saying taking a mission. Let's take your first mission. Mei Ling will assist with giving this mission to start your journey. Does she look familiar? Hmm. Left click the mission icon to the right of Mei Ling. For this mission it will be a blue colored icon with a white movie reel. This will start you on the story mission Ground Zero. So absolutely that's what we want to do. So in any of these cases if you like these guys it's like a quest marker I guess hanging off to the side there and all we need to do is click on it and let's have a look around the environment that we're in and by the way yeah you look at this stuff let's see if we can zoom right in and see it that is gross and tentacly and gooey and disgusting basically it is like slimy alive tentacle snot stuff gross you so of course we don't know what that is just yet if we are just playing the game all right let's go and have a chat to Mei Ling here and you can see this is how the quests work and again it is kind of weird if you're not used to it there's no window that pops up it actually kind of appears in the game world and again if we zoom in or zoom out the quest actually does the same we can click on it to get rid of it it's a very cool interface system if you ask me and you can see we can accept it by clicking on the accept there and it says normal though this must be a dream you find yourself experiencing the aftermath of the Tokyo subway attack but through another's eyes follow the lead of the other secret world agents and work your way through the station down to the heart of this darkness tier one it sounds like the situation is worsening you should recover a weapon so if we hover over this title bar here we can see it says accept there we go and you can see now it says that we need to arm ourselves with a shotgun so it says it sounds like the situation is worsening there we go and she's telling us there arm ourselves interactable items are marked with a yellow outline so let's have a click on the tutorial thing and you'll see it says there you go right click to use them it's that simple so below us there is a gun let's pick that up what are you waiting for Oh dear. And by the way folks, you can see we've got a weapon equipped. That means we've got one and two down here. We've got two abilities. The first one here is a pump action active ranged ability. It's instant. Up to five enemies and I'm going to hit tab and hit one. Nice shooting. There we go. Number two ability here. How many have they got in there? It's gone viral so fast. If this gets out into Tokyo, it doesn't. We stop it here, whatever it takes. Oh, let's get out of the way. We're getting hurt there. Oh, nasty. All right, let's take a brief pause to have a look at this number two ability here. There we go. Oh, and they're talking. Hang on. 
Alright, it's just idle chit chat. So number two ability here, this is called Powder Burn. It builds one resource for each equipped weapon and that is an active ranged ability. It's a single target strike attack that deals 200 physical damage and affected targets also become impaired and knocked to the ground. Now this particular ability here requires a shotgun and once again the first one here, this is a builder if you like. It's a cone, it affects up to five enemies in a 60 degree 7 meter cone and it builds one resource for each equipped weapon and that attack deals 136 physical damage but you can see now we've got ourselves another part of the quest move on through the gate by the way you've got a couple of stances in this game as well you can see my shotgun equipped on the back there if we hold the tilde key or rather tap the tilde key which is the one next to the one at the top there the number row on the top of your keyboard if you hit tilde it will toggle between basically active and passive or it's like sheathing your weapon if you like but we're all ready for combat about there and we're all ready for running around in that mode so it's nice and simple and also by the way if you want to see which of your weapons you have got equipped hit C and there it is down the bottom are your weapons basically your main hand and your off hand if you like you can click on it and that's how you move it around click on it again to drop it in there hover over it and it'll tell you what it is and what its particular stats are nice and simple all right so let's move on and have a chat to these guys you can see we've got to move through the gate to select a target left click on it or press tab to select the closest target if you have no target oh what did that say if you have no target there we go press tab or left click to select a target using your abilities will automatically target the nearest enemy if you're in the midst of a battle with a group of enemies and you know what that is actually a really really cool idea I like that now by the way when we click on someone you can see it comes up above their head and it shows their distance and it shows their particular health and they are Mei Ling Mei Ling does that ring any bells to anybody there you go 10 internet points to anyone who can figure that one out all right let's carry on with our questing now. Looks like we have to go downstairs. Oh, knock back there. Don't let it get on you. Don't even breathe in. It's reacting to us. Like it knows we're coming. This stuff can't think. It's a cancer. Cancer doesn't know you're coming. It just is. Oh, I like that number two shot, that's for sure. That really goes down well. All right, let's carry on moving through the gate. New plan. Fight chaos with chaos. Keep the bastards at a distance, then take them out. That's your plan? Well, it's a plan. You've got points, Sarah. Make every shot count. And here we go, you can see it says we have ourselves a new ability and there it is. If we hover over that one it's called Knee Capper and this one is an active ranged ability as well. It is instant with a 5 second cooldown. It's an attack dealing 240 physical damage up to 3 enemies in a 60 degree 7 meter cone in front of us. And the enemies hit by this ability are hindered, slowing their Before movement say, speed. Short sharp kick in the ass. Short sharp kick in the ass indeed. All right. See if we can find ourselves some more enemies here. Incoming! There we go, that was our new one. You can see it go out in a cone there. Fantastic. There it is again. Oh, look at this. I'm getting low on health. Let's get out of here. Ouch. That's the virulent filth there doing that to me. And there we are, goal completed, defeat all the creatures on the platform, and now we have to regroup with the team. We're gonna need to use some heavier powers. Don't hold back, right? <coughs> I was pacing myself. All right, so you can see here, consumer abilities consume weapon resources. We'll hold them here. Make a stand. Goal completed. Regroup with the team. 
So yeah, obviously this one here, we've got ourselves a new ability. This is called Out for a Kill, and this consumes all shotgun resources. And again, these other skills are kind of like builders. They build one resource for each equipped weapon. There we go. And this one here, it says a single target attack that deals 376 physical damage. So there we go. We've already got four of these abilities. We're running through this very quickly in terms of gaining new abilities. They don't muck around. Crossing the tracks. Whoa! Okay, we've got ourselves a little mini boss here. Ouch! That was our new ability there, number four. And we took him down. Goal completed. Kill the filthy mess. That we certainly did do. And there we go. There's the help that popped up before. Warning. Watch for signs of telegraphed enemy attacks to move quickly out of range. Now that's something that I haven't shown you guys, by the way. Let's pop our weapon away. Well, no, not shoot it. And in this game, apart from the fact that we have sprinting, there are also a couple of defensive moves. So for example, if I double tap to the left, the right, or forwards or backwards, I will actually do a dodge. So let's try one, I don't know, let's try one forwards and see what happens. Tapping W twice, and there we go, basically to ourselves a barrel roll. And you can see it's got an active dodge cooldown on it, so you can't do it all of the time. So if I double tap backwards right now, nothing happens. If I try it now, now that the cooldown has expired, there we go. So that's very cool, and of course you can do them strafing left and right as well. All right, so let's find our way around here. Where are we going? Cross the tracks alone. It out. Feel this broken body in dead. Left click on the soldier on the ground to select him and use our new healing ability to heal him. So you can see we've already got ourselves a heal, which is really cool. And there's the soldier down there. Here's the heal. It's on our number five hotkey. And it says that it springs blossom, active magic ability, a single target heal. So let's click on him and the number five. All right, you can see we've got to enter the battle against the filth. There it is. The battle is already raging in the subway platform. Work with the secret world agents to overcome the waves of filth. Now, of course, we can hit F1, target ourselves, and heal ourselves as well now with our Springs Blossom. Thank goodness for that. Well done! Oh, and there we go, the big boss. Ouch! All right, that kind of hurt. I'm going to give myself a bit of a heal, what do you think? Oh, and I need another heal as well. Big ability there, and we've still got resources. We can use it again out for a kill. Oh, 
The gate's opening. I think that's bad news. Yep, bad news. They're not stopping. And they will not stop. This is all to hold us back. Top marks for effort. Someone has to push through. This confusion may be all the time we have. Someone? Oh, I need to heal myself. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Here we go. That topped us up. Let's see our ability, or rather our objective here, is to fight our way through the gate. It is chaos here, folks. Let's see if we can push through. Look out! It's all coming down! And that was handy. That actually happened to kill them. There we go. Enter the last platform is our next objective there. After the collapse of the tunnel, there is an eerie silence. Find the source of the filth, and we have to enter the last platform. That's right, folks, we've been put into walking mode automatically. And yeah, what on earth is that? You look like you've just seen the end of the cosmos, mate. I know the feeling. We're on the edge of it, and it's time to play your part, scene. Me and you, we're blood now, yeah? Templars for the win in that. Looks like you've got some training to do before you're ready for your first kill. You want to do what your letter says. Go speak with Sonak at the Templars Gap. It's not far, can't miss it. Honest, it's unmissable.